we ended the last hour, Darren, talking about this newly released clip of Tucker Carlson, you know, behind the scenes, Media Matters for America gets the clip. And once again, it just seems to make him stronger, make him look more likable, better. He's talking about uh, he's talking about pronouns in your Twitter bio, which I think our audience based on the the mountain of emails we just received, literally hundreds of emails saying, yeah, we support Tucker. We love him even more now that we've seen this clip. You had a piece in Revolver, um, Checkmate Fox News, why Tucker Carlson is the perfect choice to host the GOP presidential debates. Now, this is the other storyline that is uh, kind of circulating around. I think Washington Post broke the first story, and I think it's genius. And, you know, Charlie... Turning Point USA, they've had a great relationship with Fox News for many years. But this is this is a new era, is it not, Darren? What is happening, and why why do you think this is checkmate for Tucker Carlson? Well, it's a brilliant move along a number of different dimensions. I mean, there's so much going on here uh, from the kind of particular aspect of Tucker Carlson versus Fox News. And then there's the most important element, which is, sort of Americans being exposed to the kind of information they need in order to make informed decisions about critical issues. And so it, these two elements really converge in Tucker potentially um, hosting this debate with Fox. Now, I think it's this piece from Revolver.News, which has really gone white hot. It's amazing how popular this piece is, I think because the idea itself is so perfect and really struck a nerve with people because it it just ticks all the boxes that you would want. Um, it's the ultimate way for Tucker to show Fox, I'm the guy, I'm the star, I'm the That's voice right. of the American people because behind the scenes in all of this, and I don't want to dismiss Fox's perspective because as cynical and loathsome as it is, it's not clear yet whether it's untrue. But I'll tell you this, Fox believes that they are the star, the network is the power, and all the talent, even Tucker's talent, no matter how popular, no matter how beloved, is ultimately interchangeable because the dumb, obedient cattle, the masses of Americans who are addicted to TV, they will keep coming back to the trough. They'll keep lining up for another spoonful of cattle slop. That's what Fox is counting on, and that's why they think they have the leverage. And they think, well, you know, people will be upset about Tucker for a while, but ultimately they'll come around because there's a lot of political stuff happening and people just won't be able to help themselves. So Tucker can, of course, go and do his own thing. He can do a digital thing. It'll be immensely profitable for him. He'll make more money there. And in certain ways, I think he will have even more influence. But I think it's important to be realistic, no matter how much we want to prematurely pronounce the death of network television, there is still, for better or worse, I think worse, but we have to live in reality here. There is still, for better or worse, a special kind of magic, a special legitimacy attached to primetime network television. And I think to fully kind of analyze the special impact of what Tucker was, we have to appreciate the role of that primetime um, uh, platform as a really significant force multiplier for Tucker's voice. In fact, Megyn Kelly put it great. You know, Megyn is actually, I'll be honest, a lot smarter than I gave her credit for when I hear her speaking in different types of venues. Her analysis was spot on. And it wasn't, you know, just catering to, because all the masses, they want to hear, the people listening to this, they want to hear, oh, Cable news is dead, it's done, it's irrelevant, it's all digital now. Now, it's way more true than it was five years ago, but it's not completely true. And, and well, Megan illustrated it in, in the following. She said, look, no matter how big a digital following is, Tucker Carlson's ability to get elected GOP officials and GOP hopefuls to sort of... Um, accommodate him, to want to please him, for them to be scared to death 
that he'll do a segment attacking him. That kind of political influence that he wielded is very hard to imagine transferring into simply the digital sphere. Even somebody like Rogan, who's probably the hottest person in media in many metrics, doesn't have the power to get politicians to bend to his will to please him in the way that Tucker had in his primetime slot. So fast forward to the debate. Here's why the debate is so brilliant, is that it recognizes this special quality and maybe the one area in which Tucker's influence might diminish, which is this criti critical comparative advantage of having influence over the po political process. For him to host the debate preserves that level of influence and mm -hmm. it doubles down on it and it surpasses Fox. If he can get Trump, and Trump is no friend of Fox News at this point. Fox News has stabbed him in the back a million times. And they intend to do so throughout the campaign, despite the fact that he's the clear front runner. So if Trump says, forget this, I'm not doing a Fox debate, Tucker hosts the debate, and De DeSantis is convinced that he can get a fair shake, which I think he would, you know, more than more than any other. I, I actually matter. agree with that. I, 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 right. I will say that I think DeSantis and Tucker have – Communication, you know, I've I've heard course, that to the grapevine. Yeah. So there, yeah. and I do think DeSantis there is a level of trust. Get a fair shake, and think about this: there's a debate with Tucker hosting it, being Trump is there, DeSantis is there. Trump, you know, Tucker's not going in on Trump or in on DeSantis. He's preserving this kind of elevated posture of, oh, I'm just, you know, asking both sides the questions that the American people want answered. It's such a win because. People aren't going to be tuning into Fox News. People are going to Tucker Carlson for a matter of critical importance pertaining to the future of the GOP and the future of the country. So it's such a well, brilliant strategic move. And Darren, it's such an important move in order for the American people to have the questions answered that they actually want to be answered. Um, it just, as I said, it's it's one of those strategic moves that's just a checkmate. It's it's, all the it's way amazing. Down the well, Darren, let me let me posit this idea. This might be the only debate that both DeSantis and Trump might attend. This could be the one. I mean, because Trump has already said he's not happy with the RNC's process. And by the way, going outside of the RNC is another power move, a big flex on all, all the people that are skeptical of the RNC under Rana's leadership.